You're listening to Player Development, a channel focused on the intersection of sports and character growth. Please like and subscribe to support the stories being shared, the growth of our listeners, and to stay up to date with our latest content. Hi, my name is Karis Potosik. I'm one of the co-owners of CrossFit Liquid. Uh, we're a gym 24-7 with 24-7 access uh, for people that have never done a squat and um, athletes who are competitive. We want people who are 12 years old to 72 years old. Um, we're all about sustainable fitness and just getting, a, getting you in here to live your best life. All right, Karis, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for opening up your gym to let us use this space for this interview. Yeah, no problem. Really appreciate your time. Um, so tell us a little bit, how did you get into CrossFit and what drives your passion for it? Um, so I have a short and a long answer for you. The short answer is um, I got really into nutrition and just kind of learning like what's a good lifestyle to, you know, for a long, happy, healthy life. Mm -hmm. Um, I was at about, I want to say like 17, um, and I follow this blogger, her name was, or her blog name is The Healthy Home Economist, hmm. and um, she had a guest blogger whose name was Paula Jagger, and she was an owner of a CrossFit, um, CrossFit Jaguar. Huh. So anyway, so I read that, um, I read that blog, or the, the post that she made, mm -hmm. and I was hooked because one, I thought she was a badass. She was 40 years old and had a six pack, super shredded. And I was like, man, I want to be that at 40. Um, and um, so I, I clicked on her name uh -huh. and wanted to learn more about her. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of got me into CrossFit from there. Um, I looked up my local CrossFit gym yeah. um, and it was Loco CrossFit for Loudoun County. Um, went there one time and the rest is history. That was, um, I guess, a decade ago. Wow. Yeah. And I know kind of from the outsider's perspective, CrossFit looks pretty intense. So for people who are maybe interested or intimidated, what was your experience like going to CrossFit for the first time and how did you keep going through that? That's a really good question. Um, I was intimidated walking into the gym. Mm -hmm. I was because, and I, I was even more intimidated after my first workout because I about died, or at least it <laughs> felt like it. And I saw all these other people that were just crushing it. They were like mm -hmm. tripling my time. Um, and I remember even the coach, he was showing me a movement, what's uh -huh. called a GHD. And I said, um, I was like, ouch, my, my thighs hurt a little bit. And he, he looked at me and he said, is it pain or soreness? And I was like, it's just really sore. And then he goes, okay, so suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, ah. But I mean, now I love GHDs mm -hmm. and um, you know, they really build a strong core. So uh, yeah, it was super intimidating at first. Mm -hmm and the trainers were, the people were, um, but the thing is, while they were intimidating, CrossFit also, and this is another thing that really mm -hmm. got me hooked, is that it's such a community, like it's so supportive. I was the last person finishing the workout mm -hmm. my first time doing CrossFit, and the entire class was cheering me on. Yeah. You know, so, and I think that just really captures CrossFit. Yeah. It was intimidating, and it is intimidating when you first walk in, mm. but the community is going to keep you coming back, and the community is going to make mm. it less intimidating, and the coaches are going to make it more accessible to you, and they'll, they'll tell you when you're being a sissy, <laughs> and they'll tell you when, okay, you're right, like, let's back off that a little mm. bit. So, I mean, infinitely scalable and modifiable, yeah. and that's, that's CrossFit, and that's part of why I absolutely love it. Yeah, so there's a piece that's competitive, but there's also a piece that's very supportive mm -hmm. as well. Yep, That's awesome. definitely. Yeah, and so from that first CrossFit workout, fast forward, like you said, maybe about a decade now, you're a co-owner of a CrossFit gym. What was that process like for you? 
so let's see. I want to say, um, I guess I'll answer that by, I, when I first started CrossFit, I, it just, hook, line, and sinker, uh -huh. drank the Kool-Aid, all the CrossFit <laughs> jokes, insert, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I think about three years into it, I, I knew that, one, it was going to be part of my life because mm -hmm. I just, I loved it. And number two, at some point in time, I wanted to own my own gym. I didn't know mm -hmm. when, and I didn't know if it was just a pipe dream, but oh. I wanted to, and I knew that that was just, I knew it was a passion. Mm -hmm. um, and it got solidified when I coached mm -hmm. for the first time. Um, and that was at Draken CrossFit. Uh -huh. And um, Corinne and Adrian check. they're super intelligent um, coaches, and they love CrossFit, and they're super competitive also. Yeah. But they were my mentors. Like they brought me into what it means to be a good coach, what mm -hmm. it means to break down movements, what it means to get people from A to B and reach their goals. They yeah. gave me that first. They gave me my foundation as a coach, mm -hmm. and that experience really solidified. Okay, I I really want to own a CrossFit gym. Yeah. You know, um, and then I coached at CrossFit Almighty, and again, just awesome mentor. Mm -hmm. um, Doug Whitaker, the owner of CrossFit Almighty, yeah. just like loved the sport, loves mm -hmm. the people. And so anyway, seeing those awesome mentors and being yeah. mentored by them, mm -hmm. that really gave me a passion mm -hmm. to then want, know, have the skill and then want to do, like I want to yeah. be them, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I want to change people's lives like they did. Mm. And um, so that just really, kept building the passion, if that makes yeah. sense. And so um, then about six months ago when I was approached mm -hmm. um, with the idea of opening this gym, it was kind of a no-brainer. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So that, I mean, that's kind of how it all started. Uh -huh. um, you asked how uh, my passion, how did I yeah. grow the passion? So the the nutrition piece that oh that was the short answer but it really was long but it was supposed to be the short answer um the long answer is um and this is probably where my heart is like as far as why i am so passionate about mm -hmm. crossfit when i was i think 13 uh -huh. um i asked my parents this morning i said 13 i thought it was 15 but all that to say there were, i had dysfunctional eating Hmm. Um, eating disorder from the age of 13 yeah. um, and obviously like what comes with that is it was deeply insecure over my body mm. I didn't know what it meant to be um, healthy I didn't know what that looked like I uh. felt like I was kind of grasping for the wind mm -hmm. um, and I think our culture back then was beauty is stick figure and sure. that just yeah. naturally is not my body type mm -hmm. so I was Again, that kind of put me in this like difficult spot as a 13-year-old where you're yeah. really concerned about, about what people think. And I just didn't have the experience or knowledge of what it meant to be healthy yeah. paired with being deeply insecure. Right. Um, so that's when I got into the, the health portion. Mm -hmm. um, and then fast forward into CrossFit, what I fell in love with and what really changed my life is um, every body type mm -hmm. has a purpose, every body type has a function, and every body type has a skill. Yeah. So the people who are more slender are great at gymnastics. Uh -huh. They're great at running. Yeah. That's just their body build, mm -hmm. right? Like every body build excels at something different. Sure. And um, my body build excelled at lifting heavy things. Yeah. Um, and CrossFit kind of has all of that uh -huh. in one sport. Yeah. And, um, and whether or not you're good at one thing or another doesn't make you a better athlete. It just means mm -hmm. you're that. You're better at one thing or the other. And, so, um, and then pair that with the community. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. The community and the culture is all about do your best. Mm -hmm. It's going to hurt and it's going to suck and you're going to fail but every day you get fitter and you get better. Yeah. So even if you fail, that's not a, a failure because mm -hmm. you're still getting fitter. 
And um, and it helps. So it helped me really embrace my body. Yeah. It helped me change my mindset from I am that my body is meant to look a certain way and I need to eat mm -hmm. to make it look that way. Right. To I need to eat to fuel myself <laughs> properly. Yeah. So that my body can function mm -hmm. the best of its capability. And just that like that mentality switch was huge for me. Yeah. It sounds like CrossFit was really empowering for you to allow your body to be what it should be. Yeah. As opposed to trying to fit it into Definitely. What other other people or society says it should look like. Definitely. Mm. I actually met my yeah. husband yeah. in CrossFit too. Yeah. That's a good that's a good <laughs> bonus. <laughs> it is a good bonus. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. And as you're talking about this whole process from age 13 to now owning your own gym, what, what was the challenge that you faced throughout kind of this process of owning and opening up a gym? Um, well, as I thought about how to answer that yeah. question, I was going to say something like it's, it's difficult. It was difficult for me to find my voice as a leader hmm. with all the opinions out there about how you should open a gym and what it, you know just sure starting a new endeavor everybody has opinions yeah. about how it should go and so it, that was probably a minor challenge compared to mm -hmm. what ended up happening um, a week before we opened the gym mm -hmm. my husband's sister died yeah. um, tragically and she left two little girls mm -hmm. um, behind and um, so we are in the process now of adopting them, but that that happened one week before the gym opened. Wow. It, it, yeah, I you know that it was just a lot being mm -hmm. a new mom myself with a four month yeah. old at the time, mm -hmm. and then being a new business owner, and then now being a mom of like zero to three in yeah, less than four a, months. That's it was, a lot of changes in a short amount of time. Yeah, it was, a, it was definitely a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, as a business owner, I was very conflicted, mm -hmm. um, definitely in the beginning because, and I, I talked to my business partner, Dee Clawson, a lot about it, and um, kind of like, how do, I, how do I do this? Like, I have three kids, two and under. Yeah. How am I supposed to run a business and be Mm -hmm. a mom and meet their needs um, and there was one point in time where I, I called him and I was like D I don't I can't do this anymore you know like or I, I can't co-own with you right and um, he really is like the best business partner ever he said to me he was like Karis I will not let you <laughs> back out of this <laughs> he's like we will do what we need to do to make it work mm -hmm. but you're you know, essentially, like, you're called to this. Mm -hmm. I see it. Everybody sees it. Yeah. Let's make it work. And, I mean, probably, like, his support, mm -hmm. lots of prayers, yeah. our church, our family, all that stuff, all that, those things, like, really, mm -hmm. um, it takes a village, yeah. one, to raise a family, but then, two, to open a gym in the midst of a family yeah. tragedy like that. Mm -hmm. So... That was definitely a challenge, and honestly, it still is a challenge sure. to just figure out childcare. And again, like, what does it mean to be a good mom while, yeah. you know, prioritizing this over being a business owner, but then doing both excellently, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, and you know, I think on social media or just in our discourse, we have a tendency to put people on a pedestal who have gone through things like you have and are still, you know, persevering on and. You know, saying, oh, she's a super mom and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. I guess, just putting that before you now, like, what kind of thoughts do you have about that kind of perception of moms and, or people in general who are, like, still going through and overcoming even after these challenges and tragedies? I think um, the term super mom mm -hmm. to me doesn't apply because, um, so in, in that kind of situation, mm -hmm. for me personally, I'm only sitting here because of my husband, mm -hmm. because of my business partner, because of my mom mm -hmm. who watches the kids, yeah. because of my neighbor who watches the kids, you know? Mm -hmm. 
I'm only able to do this and, and take those pictures on social media uh -huh. and post them because of all those people. Mm -hmm. And so to me, the term super mom is, is not even real because that implies that I'm doing it, that it's just me mm -hmm. doing it. And it's, it's definitely not, it's, it's, you know, it's humbling when you go through any kind of tragedy or any kind of difficult time. But mm -hmm. the truth is like, I would never be able to do anything excellently just by myself. So the, just the community, um, my faith and family, that that's, it really does take a village to do anything yeah. excellently, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. In my experience. Yeah, absolutely. And I know we've kind of touched on this a little bit. How do your identities of mother, coach, and anything else that you might be taking on, how do those intersect and impact with each other? That's a really good question. I thought about that one a lot. Um, I think that um, I, this probably goes into like my passion for CrossFit, but mm -hmm. I love helping people mm -hmm. reach their goals and I love seeing somebody go from A to B. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, just even as simple as um, my two-year-old daughter was, didn't know how to suck on a straw. Uh -huh. And so I taught her how to, you know, yeah. put her lips around the straw and suck on it, you know. And when she finally got it after like an hour and a half, <laughs> it was so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just love being able to help people mm -hmm. get from A to B, whatever yeah. their goal might be. And so I think that passion really does intersect. Mm -hmm. And then also just from my story of how I got into CrossFit, yeah. I'm ex super excited to impart to them um, a healthy lifestyle. They don't have to do CrossFit, <laughs> but I'm excited about just them growing up in an environment where, you know, we take care of our bodies, mm -hmm. we take care of the people around us, and we engage in a healthy lifestyle together as a community. Mm -hmm. And it's fun, Yeah. you know? Yeah. It's not that boring hour dark in the basement on the treadmill, <laughs> you know, where you really hate yourself the entire yeah. hour, <laughs> question your existence. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, I think part of it is just like my passion and mm -hmm. helping people reach their goals. Yeah. Um, and then too, just wanting to impart to them that living a healthy lifestyle is really important but doing it with community and doing it in a way that, you know, engages kind of the fun part of life. That's, yeah. that's how you make it sustainable. Mm. That's how it lasts your entire life. Yeah, that's so, awesome. yeah. Well, that's all the questions that I had for you. I'm gonna toss it back to you for any final words or thoughts that you have about anything we've covered or anything that we haven't. Um, well, I guess, I guess to anybody out there who's wondering, like, how, how do I get started? Should I do CrossFit? Um, am I in shape enough to start CrossFit? It's one I hear a lot. I'll, I'll do it in a, in a year when I shed some pounds. Don't wait. Um, CrossFit's here to get you in shape, fitness, whatever it is for you. Find that thing that you love is here to get you in shape. and. A good trainer will meet you wherever you at, wherever you are at, to help you get to where you want to go. So, don't wait. Find a find find something you love, and it will carry you through the rest of your life to live a happy, healthy life for as long as you're here.